You are welcome to Believers Global TV. Like, subscribe, and share this message. The deceitfulness of pride. Let's examine the subject of pride for a moment. We have to understand as the body of Christ and, our, and as believers, what exactly is pride? And why is it such a serious issue in my life and in your life? Why do we have to battle and wrestle with this concept, this idea of pride? Where did it come from? Why is pride such a, a big deal in the life of people? It seems very easy to deal with other negative traits and other you know, negative habits, but this pride thing it seems to have a bulldog strength that holds on to destinies holds on to institutions churches men of god leaders nations even to their peril so i like us to deal with the subject of pride before i'm going to approach my discussion in two dimensions number one the spiritual dimension and then the second the psychological dimension because when it has to do with pride it's not just a spiritual issue are we together now yes the spiritual aspect of pride is when demon spirits come to fortify a belief system so that they cause you to remain in that state you see there is such an empowerment from the devil that keeps men in pride but there are certain conditions that must be met for that spirit to be fruitful in the life of its victim. As with the manifestation of all other spirits, the law is that conditions must be created to allow the excelling of any spirit, any spirit at all, is condition dependent, including the Holy Spirit. No spirit can veto into man and just begin to carry out activities. The first assignment is that atmospheres or conditions must be created that makes it conducive for the operation of that spirit. Pride is one of them. If you're together, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the idea of pride and how deadly and how dangerous it is. From Genesis to Revelation, there is no positive attribute connected to pride. Every time the Bible talks about pride, it always connects it with destruction. It always connects it with folly. It always connects it with all kinds of things. There is no mention of pride and lifting together. There is no mention of pride and increase together. From Genesis to Revelation, Every time the Bible mentions pride, either directly in scripture or through the similitude of a story or in parable, the ones who are victims of that pride, if there is no repentance and there is no brokenness and conversion, they will always end up worse than the story started with them. Pride, a killer, a destroyer of many destinies today many destinies have not only remained at that level but gone down shamefully so for many because of this danger of pride are we together now i want to just delve a bit into a concept of the human nature let's discuss a bit on psychology and then I'll get back to my teaching. This is very important. You cannot truly, truly understand pride until you understand the human nature. Please pay attention. We are here to learn. The church of God is an institution of learning scriptural context, but we borrow fields of study and intelligence to help give credence to what we are discussing. Are we together now? Many believers think that all it takes to being free from some of these things is just knowing that God delivers and God sets free. You have to understand pride from a psychological dimension. What, why do people fall victim of this thing that the Bible calls pride? You must understand the reality of the human nature. Please follow me very carefully as we open up ourselves to ourselves to understand what is the motivation behind the activities that we do. Hallelujah. I studied this years ago and it changed my life and I had the honor of looking through it again whilst preparing for this note. 
now every human being the bible tells us that man is tripartite in expression man is a spirit the bible says and that spirit lives in a body and connecting that spirit and body is a faculty that we call the mind is that true that the spirit in partnership with the mind is what you call a soul are we together now yes and that the mind of of man has three compartments psychologists tell us and even the bible attests to that the will emotions and intellect and that all of these faculties of expression help to they help man to to interact with this duality of realms that even though man is in the physical he can interact with the realm of the spirit or any realm above the three-dimensional realm by the means of these faculties if the mind were to be taken away from the man there will be a disconnect between the body and the spirit and we know that the body is merely an instrument of execution is that true the body does not have a will on its own religion agrees to that science agrees to that the body in itself does not have any power to execute that is the reason why when a spirit leaves a body that body lies lifeless and begins to deteriorate and begins to decompose because it has no life and power on its own the body is merely a biological instrument that executes realities that have been agreed upon the spirit through the faculties of the mind this is very important you have to understand that men are not just spirits please listen men are not just spirits they interact with this realm through the mind that means there is a psychological composition to every man born of a woman there is a psychological composition to every man born of a woman now across several colleges universities there have been all kinds of psychologists who have done all kinds of research work on man this entity called man they have approached it from a sociological standpoint they have approached it from a religious standpoint they have approached it from a biological standpoint and attempts to unravel this entity called man to be able to study what it is that is responsible for some of the ills that happen to men and so different people have written all kinds of dissertations uh, in an attempt to contribute to this knowledge and one of them would be would take for reference just one of them a behavioral psychologist a professor called Abraham Maslow Abraham Harold Maslow and he was a behavioral psychologist he was a professor of psychology and he lived from 1908 to 1970 he postulated a theory called the theory of motivation that eventually brought what we have known in the psychology world today as the hierarchy of needs abraham maslow he brought the hierarchy of needs it was an attempt to describe human behavior he wanted to describe the motivation behind the activities of men on earth so that he would now be able to help us make sense of why men do what they do why men act the way they act why men go where they go are we together now this was a very very successful work because it helped to frame intelligence businesses today run on these principles their understanding of human psychology has helped them to build products help them to build all kinds of platforms based on this so we're going to look at it very briefly he postulated a theory of the theory of um, needs the hierarchy of needs I meant to say this is very important the theory of motivation and from it came the hierarchy of needs I wouldn't dwell so much I just want to give us um, a basic understanding now there are all kinds of intelligent people here intellectuals and um, I'm not speaking as a professor or authority I was just a good student who studied some of this in an attempt to prepare a message and preach I have to put that disclaimer we live in a world that is very civilized now so please understand that I'm not teaching as any authority with any qualification around psychology we are interacting with the whole world I am merely a student who as an attempt in an attempt to make sure that I help my people understand the gospel and this dimension 
I delved into that understanding to bring forth something. Is that true? That will help you relate to it. So this is very important. Thank you. Hallelujah. But then you can trust what I'm saying because they are not my ideas. This is well researched. By God's grace, we are serious people. We are very serious people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please media help me. I, I gave the media an assignment. If you can project this a little. This is a pyramid that was a representation of Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It was an attempt to show the motivation behind human behavior from the greatest to the least. That means that all men are driven by these factors right there. At the base of the pyramid, we have the greatest need of man. He calls it psychological needs. Another word for it is basic needs. So at the base of the pyramid, the largest part of the pyramid, for those of you who I hope that you're seeing it, is wide and clear enough. But just to touch on them. He says that all men, the urgency that men express in their lives is primarily to be able to achieve their psychological or basic needs first. That means in order of priority, a dying man is not looking for real estate. A dying man is looking for air to breathe. When he can breathe air, then he needs water. When he finds water, he can now find food. Is that true? When he can now find food, he now realizes he's naked and he wants clothes. Are you seeing now? In that order of priority, if he has clothes, he now realizes that he needs shelter. So he's saying that in order of priority, the man who is looking for a house, if you strip that man naked, the issue of house becomes a non-issue. He tries to cover his nakedness. Are we together now? If that man who is naked is so thirsty to the point of death, he will not mind nakedness again because the thirst becomes a priority. Is that true? And the man who is hungry and thirsty, if something happens and he's going to be starved of air, he does not mind hunger. He first wants to leave. So Abraham Maslow was saying that there is a motivation behind human needs. All men, their first need is the basic need or the psychological need. I will show you how this connects to pride. Psychological needs or basic needs include the biological requirements for human survival. That is the first most important need in the flesh now of every man. The need for air, the need for water, the need for food, the need for shelter, the need for sleep, the need for clothing. All of these things come under the basic needs. By basic there, it means they are foundational and any other thing can fail but this. Men will kill to make sure they have this. Men will fight one another to make sure they have this. Are we together? Quickly, let's go to the second part of the pyramid in ascending order. The second, you see it from there, is called safety needs. That means when your basic needs are met and you don't have a problem with food again, you don't have a problem with shelter, you don't have a problem with um, sleep or clothing, your needs, your motivation now increases. Your next need becomes your safety needs. Security and safety now becomes your priority. People now want to experience control, predictability and order in their lives so you now start thinking of employment you now start thinking of your health you now start thinking of personal security there are people today who are not thinking of employment they are thinking survival there are people today who are not thinking health it's amazing how that as we grow once upon a time in my life i would never think about health to stay healthy avoid this food i mean the issue is to make sure that you eat well and you are happy but there is a level you get to where that is solved now you have to need a gym now you have to need a gym instructor to help you manage your health why because those needs are right is that true they now tell you avoid this avoid that avoid that for the sake of your health so the next need is your safety need you want control and predictability so you want a job that gives you a steady salary you want your health to be in place and you want to make sure that your life is protected that nobody just comes to waste your life now if you have this in place the third part of the pyramid please let's hurry up the third is called esteem okay um 
okay this one says belongingness and love needs i call it love and acceptance needs isn't it amazing it starts with basic needs you don't want to die once you've solved that then you now move to security needs once security needs are in place the next is now the need for love and acceptance we call them social needs generally the need to feel loved the need to feel accepted so now you begin to pay attention to relationships friendships family and you now want to connect to groups all kinds of groups and clubs and societies because you want that sense of belonging you want that sense of acceptance notice the ascension that the basic and most desperate of your need is to eat sleep once that is solved the needs increase the need for security and safety once that is solved the next need is the need for love and acceptance through relationships and all kinds of platforms the moment that is solved then now please look up this is where trouble begins in your life this is a very powerful representation most of the, the first second and third doesn't create so much trouble in your life real trouble starts from the fourth part of the, the pyramid it's called esteem needs the fourth part of the pyramid is called esteem needs what does that mean the need for the esteem for oneself and the need to find respect from others what you call reputation reputation is a description of people's perception of you at this point now you are not looking for your basic needs again your security needs have been met your social needs have also been met the next thing that is left is your ego and your reputation before yourself and before men this is where trouble starts you need to understand this so that as you are training people in leadership in your company in ministry understand that they are growing a time will come if you do not know how to manage this you are going to be in trouble because a time will come the people you are raising will not need food again the people in your company the staff may have started as maybe even a security person somewhere opening and closing the gate but eventually as they begin to rise you see that their needs and their priorities shift many parents do not understand the transitions in the behavior of their children now if you understand this you see the way your child behaves if he's receiving school fees from you it's not the same way your child behaves now if he's earning a scholarship of hundreds of thousands of naira or dollars you see that the priorities change maslow helped us to put this thing in perspective let's look very quickly esteem needs at this point people begin to want independence and they begin to pay attention to achievement what gives you fulfillment at this level is not eating well it's not driving a car you want to achieve goals and then you want a sense of independence you do not want to be under the hold of anybody or anything are we still together shout amen, amen. i assume your silence is that you are really understanding the thing and you're allowing it to absorb into your spirit esteem needs at this point you begin to be sensitive to everything titles sensitive to recognition sensitive to who says what remember the five-year-old version of you before that time the ten-year-old version of you before that time has no business there are people here today their concern is simply to come and hear the gospel press into christ that it doesn't matter whether they are wearing an oversized cloth or not it doesn't matter whether what they are wearing is torn or not because according to maslow the need for survival they are at the basic level now let the word keep coming the word keeps translating you as you are getting results what happens eventually you will leave the first part of the pyramid you will now rise to safety needs i'm tired of staying in a house with five or six or ten people i think i need my own place now security and safety is that true yes esteem needs the need for independence the need for status the need for prestige this is why people join all kinds of clubs and societies this is why people begin to come up with all kinds of things that help to concretize the, their relevance 
relevance and status and prestige and reputation are the key words at this level and then the fifth is called self-actualization needs self-actualization needs the need for fulfillment and the need for legacy for instance when you see someone who is at age 80 or 90 notice how everything reverses at age 80 or 90 the gentleman does not care again or the man the old man does not care whether his hair is combed he does not care whether he zips his trouser he does not care whether the buttons are in place he sits with you and says young man let me teach you something 45 years ago this is what happened and while you are looking at him it will be foolish of you as a young man to look at the person and say sorry the you're, you're putting this shoe is supposed to be this way and he says so that is what your focus is on because at that level it is legacy his pride is not what he does with himself or to himself again his pride is the people that he's able to raise that become instruments of continuity notice how this transition happens in your life if you flog your child male or female your teenage child especially in the presence of anyone that is a huge embarrassment you would have taught something but you see an adult who fall down on the road and stand up and dust himself like nothing happened because he's looking for a job he has three children and he needs to sort things out that shame that he used to have as a little boy has gone because of other needs and other serious priorities abraham mashlow final recap and we'll get back to the teaching arranged in order of priority ascending order psychological or basic needs and then safety needs love and acceptance needs esteem needs self-actualization needs praise the name of the lord now please write this down thank you write this down i appreciate thank you thank you let's get to work thank you praise the name of the lord hallelujah thank you i appreciate you now write this down the highest psychological need we teach this in our school of ministry the highest psychological need of all men please write it and tie it in the name of jesus may you never forget this is the golden rule that governs the psychology of men the highest psychological need of all men anybody at all who is a man the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved accepted celebrated and appreciated please write it down the highest psychological need of all men we're examining the root of pride and so we're giving it a psychological study the need to be loved the need to be accepted the need to be celebrated and the need to be appreciated hallelujah praise the name of the lord are we together now now listen to me sir please don't be embarrassed mama please can i can i use you for an example let's celebrate this our mother everyone let her come i don't know her but please come and then you my friend the white man please come let him come to come sir please if you can don't be embarrassed please come come nothing to embarrass you at all please come man let's keep celebrating them just take it easy i'm sorry i'm sorry i didn't know that you would need this thank you ma god bless you please come sir please come thank you god bless you thank you thank you please stand everybody please rise and give these people a round of applause from the depth of your heart just go ahead keep clapping till i ask you to stop keep clapping don't stop keep clapping now watch this watch this watch this you do you may not know them and you don't even know what they have done but your clap has fulfilled this law the need whatever it is that you have done what they receive from your clap is that i am loved am i right sirs? am i right ma i am accepted 
Is that true? I am appreciated and celebrated. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just listen, listen, listen. We are learning something. Now, you come and talk to this woman and tell her you don't like me and see what she will do to you. Are we together now? Yes. Because we have given her a perception that we love you, we honor you, sir and ma, and we ask them to come to this altar and we ask everyone to stand and then to applaud them. Are we together now? Chances are that this, our mother here, and this our uncle here may not hate me easily are you seeing that now why because the memory of my honor fulfilling that psychological condition will not give them the room now imagine let's reverse it imagine that as our mother and our uncle were coming up here we asked them to come out and i started shouting at them respectfully speaking i said i don't know who you are but do you know i'm a man of god hurry up and don't waste my time come and stand here before i curse you now they may keep quiet now watch this and then i tell the man you come stand stand and i push them and push and nobody helps her up and she stands here and when i'm done with my example i say you can go and i just push them like i'm pushing animals can i tell you this it is possible that next week you would never see them here again now you understand what i say the higher psychological need of any man including the one looking at me is the need to feel loved the need to feel appreciated the need to feel celebrated and the need to feel what's the last one accepted people join occult groups because they want acceptance people fight and belong to groups why do people get angry when you don't invite them for festivities because they receive a perception through your non-invitation that you don't place value on them are we together now please let's celebrate our mother thank you sir thank you ma please help them down keep clapping till they go down you've started finish it well Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Are we together? Koinonia, please sit down. Let's continue now. The psychological buildup of men. So the highest psychological need of all men is the need to feel loved or beloved, accepted, celebrated, and appreciated. Is that true? Write this down. We begin our teaching on pride now. Before I define pride, let me tell you this. A very important information. Pride is rooted in deep insecurity, fear, powerlessness, and unworthiness pride is rooted in the feeling you can add the feeling pride intrinsically pride from a psychological angle is rooted in the feeling of deep insecurity fear a sense of powerlessness and unworthiness 95% of all manifestations of pride are a cover-up for these conditions. You have to understand this. Pride is rooted in a deep sense or a deep feeling of insecurity, fear, powerlessness, and unworthiness that means if i feel insecure intrinsically if i live in fear if i feel i am powerless and not in control of people or circumstances if i feel unworthy i will have to devise a psychological way of covering that condition the name of that cover-up is pride are we together now yes 
so that intrinsically largely so may not be always the case but almost always anywhere you truly find pride behind the scenes is an expression of insecurity an expression of fear an expression of powerlessness or lack of control and an expression of unworthiness so people create that psychological cover they try to assume an attitude of boldness intimidate or bully others but behind the scenes ask those who are legal practitioners ask those who operate as security people all around they will tell you when you catch some of these people who are involved in all kinds of societal violence once you sit with them down after dealing with them punishing them when they are sure that destruction is imminent they would break down and start crying and you now tell them but why do you do this and then they will begin to tell you nobody loves me I came from a background where this so most of that thing is a cover-up an attempt to wrongly manage insecurity an attempt to wrongly manage fear an attempt to wrongly manage a sense of powerlessness and an attempt to manage unworthiness are we together now yes we're dealing with the deceitfulness of pride four or five scriptures and then i will tell you or let me just define pride and then we'll look at these scriptures please write this down three definitions we're looking at pride do not forget our topic tonight the lifting power of true humility the first definition of pride is a lost for the praises of men what is a lost what is lost on ungodly inordinate affinity a lost for the praises of men pride number two the second definition a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority don't worry i'll take it again a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity comma importance comma merit or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or as displayed in conduct i'll take it one last time pride a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority whether cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct please write it and look up you can see that there are two expressions to this definition on one hand it can be a perception that is cherished in the mind it never finds physical visibility and then the second you can it can be vocally expressed in conduct when pride is expressed we call it boastfulness but just because whether pride is expressed or not pride is pride are we together so a high or inordinate opinion of one's own dignity importance merit or superiority whether as cherished in the mind or displayed in conduct let me give you my own definition now the third definition what is pride a feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception or obvious achievements a feeling of being better than others on the strength of one's perception that means just something that is worked up in your mind or in the presence of obvious achievements a feeling that you are better than others on the strength of your obvious achievement or just something that exists in the realm of your mind so pride the lost for the praises of men number two inordinate opinion of oneself number three the feeling of being better than others the following scriptures number one 
proverbs chapter 18 and verse 12 very instructive scriptures please let's pay attention the lord is teaching us can we read together as a family of faith if you can see it projected we read one two three before destruction the heart of man is haughty that's another word for pride and before honor is humility wow that means every time you see pride pride is only a john the baptist to something that is coming that before pride before destruction the heart of man is haughty is that true and it says before honor is humility very powerful scripture that anytime you see pride it did not come alone there is something it is dragging with it and what it is dragging is destruction so the end of all who are and remain in pride is destruction scripture number two proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18 the bible again here says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall can you see that now in the mouth of two or three witnesses the bible says a matter is established so pride goes before destruction it means that when satan wants to destroy a man wants to destroy a people the first thing that happens is that he introduces pride to their lives and in that state of pride destruction is beginning to form over their lives and their destinies the third scripture proverbs 29 and verse 23 proverbs 29 and verse 23 i like us to read together if you do not mind ready please read a man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit one more time please a man's pride shall bring him low but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit this is very powerful many people today i tell you the truth have destroyed enviable destinies because of this danger and this demon and this cancer of pride it has brought down kings it has brought down nobles it has brought down men of god it has brought down generals in any sense at all pride is a killer pride is a destroyer it has it has such potent power to destroy a man's future pride hallelujah when the devil wants to destroy you he now begins to give you an ungodly appetite in as much as i've shared with you that the highest psychological need of all men is the need to be loved to be valued to be celebrated but there are there is when there is a lost an obsession for recognition a loss an obsession for the praises of men the bible tells us that that state is a state that only leads to destruction let me say this sincerely we live in a celebrity world today we live in a world of superstars nothing wrong with excelling nothing wrong with being celebrated but we live in a world where people make it as a goal and no matter how they get there it does not matter they just want to get to a position where the whole world can celebrate them in ministry in business in career whatever it is and so people continue to make all kinds of compromises it does not matter what is done or not done the most important thing is this fame i must have it in ministry i found out that when you can prophesy when you can preach well they may say people respect you so it doesn't matter how and where i must make sure that i get to that position most times when people watch a successful person there is this there is this sense of admiration they look at everything they look at your designers if you're wearing one they look at your personal the car they look at everything and most times people just sit and create a world of 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 ambition and lust from what they are seeing and they come up with all kinds of false vows and say i must be like this 
I must do this, I must do that. And it becomes a negative motivation. Negative motivation. Inordinate affection for the praise of men. Whether they are lying, whether they are flattering you, you just want to hear it. This was what destroyed Lucifer. Lucifer, the son of the morning. We're going to look at examples of pride from scripture. But this is what destroyed that one cherub that covereth. When the Lord began to teach me about pride, every day till today and till tomorrow, can I tell you this? Let me challenge you. There are issues that when we are discussing, you can easily say, ah, no, 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 no. When you talk of character and moral excellence, you can say, oh, no, that's, that's me. Or that, that does not concern me. When we talk of witchcraft and manipulation, oh, that does not concern me. When we talk about money and other things, oh, that does not concern me. But the subject of pride and humility, there is nobody. This, these are the kind of teachings that there is no tell them. It's the kind of teaching that when they are done from the preacher himself to everybody, you cry and roll before God and say, Lord, help me. Because pride is a killer. It has such penetrating power. The most fortified heart, it can creep into that heart until it destroys you. Thank you for listening to this message. I know you have been blessed powerfully by this message. Please like, subscribe and share this message with others. I know your life will never remain the same. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Whatever you lay your hands on to do shall prosper. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. No even formed against you shall prosper. The Lord is your light and your, and your help. The Lord is your salvation. The Lord is the stronghold of your life. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. You are blessed everywhere you go you shall be a blessing to nations your love for god will never go down your passion for the things of god will never go down you always go higher and higher and upward only in the name of jesus i declare and declare that your path is such a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day may the lord bless you may the lord keep you Wherever you go, you are blessed. Wherever you are go, wherever you go, the word of the Lord concerning your life will be made manifest. The word of the Lord that declares concerning you that you shall be the head and not the tail shall be made manifest. The word of the Lord that declares concerning your life that you shall be a blessing to nations shall be made manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you. God bless you. See you in our next video.